you're anything like me, you get to the end of the summer and the last thing you want to do is keep working on your lawn. But fall is the perfect time to do an awful lot of maintenance practices to your lawn. If you're growing a cool season grass like perennial ryegrass, Kentucky bluegrass, or tall fescue, then this video is for you. Follow along while I break down why fall is the most important time for keeping your lawn green, growing, and healthy year round. Unless you live way up north, fall is actually the best time to plant cool season grasses. Fall plantings are considered best because there is no crabgrass or goosegrass germinating in the fall. These grasses germinate very quickly, outgrow, and interfere with cool season grasses. Another reason I like fall plantings is that soil temperatures are beginning to drop. Cooler soil results in better and quicker germination of cool season grasses. Dry summers usually turn into wetter falls and the timely rainfall massively helps with germination and stand establishment. Finally, and most importantly to me, when you plant in the fall, you'll have five to seven months for the seedlings to establish and begin to become mature before the stresses of summer begin to hit them. This is probably the biggest reason planting a lawn in the fall is better than planting in the spring. 90% plus of your yearly fertilizer needs on cool season lawns should be applied in the fall. Research has shown that nitrogen applied in the fall results in better winter color of the lawn, less spring mowing, less weeds in summer, less heat stress in summer, less water needed in the summer, and less disease problems in summer. Applying nitrogen in the fall doesn't mean you won't ever have any issues with your lawn in the summer, it will just result in fewer issues. Applying nitrogen in the spring and summer also can feed warm season weeds like crabgrass and goosegrass that tend to have a deeper root system and will access the nitrogen more easily. So minimize how much nitrogen you're putting out at this time. Fertilize according to this chart. And remember, by not bagging your clippings, you can add as much as 25% more fertilizer to your lawn. Only apply phosphorus, potassium, or anything else if indicated in a soil test. Many garden centers sell winterizer type fertilizer with higher amounts of potassium than normal. However, if your soil test potassium level is adequate, applying a winterizer fertilizer won't benefit your lawn in the slightest. Airifying your lawn can be extremely helpful. As the name suggests, airifying allows gas exchange between the root zone and the surface, which can swap gases that can be toxic to root growth with oxygen from the air that is needed for root growth. Airifying also helps to reduce soil compaction, which makes it easier for roots to grow deeper into the soil for nutrients and water. If you are growing a grass that can produce significant thatch like Kentucky bluegrass, airifying helps to reduce thatch by physically removing it and by providing oxygen to the soil which soil microbes need to help break down thatch. However, if you don't have a whole lot of traffic on your lawn from kids, dogs, or big mowers, and aren't growing a grass that tends to thatch, your lawn may only need airification every few years. Just like grass clippings, fallen tree leaves are full of nutrients. When you rake them up and bag them, you're sending all sorts of free organic fertilizer to the landfill and polluting in the process. It's one thing if you are raking your clippings and mulching landscape beds with them, but if they're being bagged up or picked up by the city, keep them on your land and help improve your soil. The easiest thing to do with fallen leaves is just to run over them with your lawn mower. This breaks them up into small pieces and allows them to fall between grass blades down to the soil surface to break down. Leaves that are not mulched can block sunlight on your lawn, which will reduce photosynthesis. Once the stress of summer is over, your cool season lawn's growth rate will increase and even though you might be sick of mowing by early fall, you'll need to keep on mowing until it stops growing in late fall. Research has shown that a lawn maintained between two and a half and three inches in the fall makes it easier to deal with tree leaves and decreases the chance of getting diseases such as snow molds. Once your lawn stops growing and it's time to put your mower up for the year, there are a number of lawnmower maintenance items you should be performing to ensure your mower will be ready to go in the spring. For lawns, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If a few weeds in your lawn don't bother you, then don't worry about weed control. If you are doing everything else right in terms of growing the right grass for your area and mowing, fertilizing, and watering correctly, then your lawn may become dense enough in time to fight off weed invasions and may not need any weed control products. However, during the fall, a number of winter annual weeds and cool weather perennial weeds tend to germinate and start growing. The key to weed control is to get them when they're small. If you've had problems with broadleaf weeds in the past like dandelion, henbit, or chickweed, products that contain 2,4-D will easily take care of these weeds. 
If you have clover, it may mean you haven't been applying enough nitrogen fertilizer. To control clover, look for products that contain clopyrrolid, dicamba, metsulfuron, quinclorac, etc. These products applied in the fall will give you the best activity against white clover. If you have lots of winter annual weed problems, you can also apply a fall pre-emerge herbicide that will kill most weeds as they begin to germinate. The thing to remember about a pre-emergent herbicide though is that they must be applied before the weeds germinate and they will also kill new turf grasses as they begin to germinate. So if you're seeding in the fall, it might not be the best idea to also apply a pre-emerge. These six tips seem like a lot, but remember, you don't have to do each one of them every year. If your lawn doesn't need air fine, don't do it. If you don't have many weeds, don't worry about them. If you don't need to overseed or renovate your lawn, don't do it. The only things you have to do each fall are fertilize with nitrogen and mow your grass up until the grass stops growing. If you do just these few simple things in the fall, your lawn will be well on its way to being healthy and thick year round.